A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. Now in a past video, I had uh, designed a little uh, controller board for this guy. And these are, what are these? IV16 Numatron tubes. And these are basically uh, little incandescent bulbs where they're, all the segments are arranged as like a seven segment. So similar to like an LED display, but just with incandescent segments. And this is actually a really neat uh, technology. This was back when LEDs were super expensive and even Nixie tubes were kind of uh, more difficult. So they sort of made uh, this technology as like an intermediary between the two. So yeah, uh, simpler to drive. These can just run off of, I think, four volts are rated for these segments. And yeah, so I designed this guy, uh, but I wanted to make a clock out of it. So I designed a PCB for the clock body and the vertical segments and everything arrived from JLC PCB, uh, which is the sponsor for this video. And interestingly enough, they sent this guy, which I think is like a phone holder. I always like seeing the little gifts that they sent along uh, with every PCB order. Anyway, uh, the two parts arrived. We have, I'll just pull one of these out. Oops, I said one. So we have these tiny little uh, vertical riser boards and these actually just slot in uh, to the main board and they have uh, like surface mount little solder pads that you can bridge and they have a little cutout for the uh, Wheatstone style bulbs that can go in there and solder on either side. That's how they work. Uh, because the tubes are vertical, I kind of had to do it this way in order to get a colon uh, incandescent bulbs in there. And finally here we have the main board itself. I opted for uh, the gold Enig coating because it looks so nice with a black matte black solder mask. So yeah, excited to see how this works. Uh, let's throw one together now real quick and um, write up some software and see what we can do with this.
Okay, so I soldered together the little vertical riser boards. I tried to line them as straight as possible. It's kind of hard to do, uh, but I think they're in there pretty good. They do stick out from the front. I probably should have set them back a little bit more, uh, but th they work perfectly fine. And the, um, the soldering was a little bit annoying. I should have soldered those first before doing the tubes because I had to get my iron in there and it's a little bit difficult, but definitely not impossible. It's only four solder pads anyway. So I know, yeah, everything soldered up nicely in terms of that. And the main board itself is here. And let's go through the uh, features. So we have a onboard micro USB, and that actually wires to this chip here, which is a CH340G. And that's a USB to serial chip. And it has its own 12 megahertz oscillator and basically just converts USB to um, UART. And that UART then goes into the ATmega 328P here. And that allows you, um, once you burn the bootloader over the uh, six pin ICSP header, then you can actually program over USB. So this is basically, you know, this, this, and this are basically what a Arduino uh, like Pro Mini is. And so I can just upload uh, sketches as if this were just an Arduino basically. And um, additionally, I can actually send and receive serial messages, so used for debugging. In this case, I'm actually using um, the serial connection also as a configuration. So I'll show you guys a quick screenshot of the serial terminal running on this chip. Uh, and it basically allows you to configure the entire clock over serial if you want. So yeah, that was actually pretty um, pretty neat. First time I've actually done that where you can configure pretty much everything through serial. And that's just if you, um, you want to not have to use the onboard buttons. Or there actually is another UART port that I wired to. This is kind of naughty. I wired it to a mini USB directly to the chip. So this is not standard. So my idea was I could chop a uh, mini USB port in half and put a Bluetooth module or Wi-Fi module on there and so that you could wirelessly configure over serial. So that, that's sort of a, a future proofing of this if I ever wanted to add that functionality. Uh, but I could have just as easily added a Bluetooth module on here somewhere, a Wi-Fi module, but whatever. Uh, so additionally, the other big improvement that I made to this clock is I'm actually using a new RTC. Before, I, the, um, I was using a DS1302, uh, which re required its own 32 kilohertz crystal, and it, it's quite a bit less accurate. I think it's like 12 ppm, so every month it would um, usually gain, in my case, actually a few minutes. It was, it was pretty inaccurate, and that probably was partially due to the, um, the layout that I chose, so maybe there's it was gaining extra pulses from switching of traces nearby. But anyway, I've actually upgraded. I found, I did a quick search and I found the DS3232M. And basically this is a MEMS version of that chip. And this is not SPI like that chip, this is I2C. So a little different interface, but actually the, um, the control um, like register setup is very similar. So I was able to port most of my code over. And this chip, because it uses MEMS, it's it's quite a bit more accurate. This is 5 ppm, so I think I'm only I'm I'm going to be able to gain an accuracy of something like um, I forget I did the calculation. It's a couple minutes a year it'll gain or lose. So this should be quite a bit more accurate. And if I couple that with um, attaching a Bluetooth or like a Wi-Fi um, uh, chip to here, that'll auto set the time. I can actually have this. Um, you know, look up the time online and, you know, once a month readjust to correct for any uh, drift in the RTC. So, but as is, it should be still pretty good uh, running over the course of a year. It should really only drift by a little bit. Additionally, I have piezo speaker buzzer because I have added um, um, a, an alarm function to this chip. So you can set an alarm time and every day it'll go off that, that at that time. So I intend to actually use this as a little alarm clock anyway. So uh, additionally, I have a super cap here. I think this is only a 0.22 farad. Uh, so it's not massive, but it'll give you, you know, an hour or so or a couple hours um, if you unplug this to um, 
you know, replug it back in and it won't lose the time. It'll keep the RTC running. In fact, the RTC is running right now off of this. And another feature that I actually added is this little guy here. This is a uh, cadmium sulfide uh, LDR, a light dependent resistor. And so I actually have the display, you can set it to have a fixed brightness or you can uh, have it auto dim. And the auto dimming will basically, if it's bright out, it'll brighten the display as much as possible to make it easier to read. But if you turn off the lights, it'll dim it down so it doesn't blind you in the dark. So like I said, I, I want to actually use this kind of as like a, a bedside alarm clock. Uh, but I need to design a case for it first, and I need to design something to mount this on better and so it can screw in uh, because it's sort of wobbling right now. I just have it on a um, a little female header there on the 0.1 inch, and it just kind of wobbles. So I plan on desi designing something or like a standoff between these two to hold this. Anyway, here are the two boards uh, plugged together and everything clears and... Uh, it does fit and I have a power bank so let's uh, power this up and I'll quickly show you guys the menu and there we go so it is um, is that right actually let me yeah so that is the correct time it is 11 33 a.m. and I set this like yesterday I think yesterday morning or something like that. So it's kept the time unplugged this whole time. So that's definitely a good sign. Anyway, um, this is basically the home screen is the time display mode. And if I press the first button, I can switch um, from 12 hour mode to 24. Obviously it's 11 a.m. So 12 hour and 24 hour mode are the same. Uh, if you press the second button, which is the minutes button, uh, on the home screen, it'll toggle the alarm. So on and off. So let's go in and uh, change the time. So if you press and hold the minutes button until it beeps, uh, you can actually adjust the time. So the hours button obviously um, toggles the hours. So 436, fine. And then if I press and hold the minutes button, it'll go to setting the uh, alarm and here I said it was what 4 p.m. So that'll be 16 in military time. And you can see obviously the alarm was armed. So so yeah, um, when the alarm matches the actual time, it'll start beeping like that. And you can press either button to clear it basically, and it's just that beep, 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 beep sort of sound. I, I could put more effort into making like melodies and stuff like that, but that's good enough for just a standard alarm clock. Anyway, uh, the light sensor you can see here, uh, this is about full brightness. Maybe actually, if I turn on the lights, um, yeah, this is full brightness. And you can see as I cover the sensor, it does dim down. And it goes to actually an appreciably low level. It's still easily visible in the dark. Uh, the glare from the window is not helping. But yeah, um, it just takes the brightness off the tubes just a little bit. It goes to about maybe half brightness, something like that. And that's good enough. Additionally, if we press and hold the first button, we can enter the other menu. Um, here, this is the month, day, and year. Uh, we can actually adjust that uh, by clicking through uh, with this button and we can adjust it with the minutes button. If we press and hold, we can go to the next menu and that's brightness. So one is uh, auto and zero is fixed at full brightness. So we just leave that on auto and um, we just press and hold to um, return to the home screen after that. Now there, pro there is a few more ideas I have for extra features and I'll probably tack them on to that menu. Uh, but yeah, other than that, right now the clock is fully functional. There are, I think, one or two bugs that I need to address in the time setting menu. Um, if you're in 12 hour mode, you can't tell if it's AM or PM. So I'm going to have to do something about that. Probably 
all time setting modes I'm just going to leave in 24 hour format that'll make it a lot easier and when it you, when you go back to the regular display it'll be like um, whatever mode it's in if it's in 24 hour mode this is 1640 12 hour mode it'll display 440. I kind of wish I added maybe one more or two more digits so I can have like an AM or PM indication but good enough as is yeah it runs uh, these tubes are being driven there is a like a diode between them just to drop the voltage a smidge because like I said I think these are rated at like four volts um, but they are you know self current regulating but the chips themselves uh, these are just 595 shift registers they do get a little warm at full brightness uh, but nothing they don't get hot or anything so i think they're fine um i probably could have stood to put a little resistance in there just to you know uh, just to not drive the tube so hot hot but uh it should be fine long term i think nothing gets like warmer than my finger <laughs> but yeah anyway uh tubes work um serial currently works a uh, few features I'm going to probably add on to the firmware before I release it. Some bugs I have to squash in terms of uh, doing things with the uh, colons. I just have them pretty much lit all the time anyway. Uh, the colons came out great. They're easier to see in the dark, but uh, the bulbs themselves actually are more visible from the sides. So I maybe should have put them on the sides. Um, when you just view them on end like this... Um, you kind of just see like a, a little bit of a dot. It's not as bright, but yeah. Other than that, I, I like the aesthetic a lot. I just need to print something, you know, to, to secure the top board so it doesn't wiggle so much and probably build a case around it um, using like a clear perspex so that if you drop it or anything or knock it over, uh, you don't damage the bulbs. One thing I noted that drives me kind of nuts is this one tube the digit is just ever so slightly out of alignment. I believe these tubes were handmade, um, which explains why there's some variance among them. Uh, but it also kind of gives it a charmy kind of homemade look as well, having the one digit slightly higher than all the others. And they're all kind of not quite so straight. I tried my best to, to solder them in straight, but yeah. Uh, overall, this project, I've learned some things uh, working with, you know, uh, having a serial menu system and uh, working with the new RTC. So I'm, I'm hopeful I'm going to do some measurements long term to see how far that strays, but definitely should be better than the last ship I was using. And it was neat using the, um, the light sensor, which I just have a linear function that um, basically lights up inversely proportional to the ambient light. So the darker it gets, uh, well, the darker it displays. The um, PWM signal to the chip, because these are uh, 595s, the output enables active low. So the PWM signal actually has to be inverted. The lower the PWM, the, high, the brighter the screen, which is why I had to have a inverse function on the light sensor there. But yeah, you can see uh, the sample rate is 10 hertz, so it updates really quickly. So 10 times a second it runs that routine. Yeah, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Once I wrap up uh, the firmware and fix the last few bugs that I found, uh, I will put the um, software the, um, the software for the AT Mega up on the project page, which is linked in the description below. It'll be a hackaday.io page. And the board files, which I verified are fully working, are currently up on that page as well so that you can build your, your own if you want to. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. And I'm in my bathroom now, just so it's dark. I just wanted to show you guys how the tubes look in the dark. And I think they look actually nicer in the dark. They have like a really warm glow, and I love that incandescent orange color that comes through. So anyway, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.